Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavet Movies. My name is John and this video is going to be my complete Arrow Collection Part 2 2024 version. This video is going to carry on from my previous one which I'll link in the description down below. So if you want to go and watch that if you haven't watched it already. This is going to be literally if you were looking across my shelves this is the ones you would pull out one after another. So first up is Frank and Hooker. I've just watched this recently and this is, this is a great movie. I can't get enough of this film. It's so good. It's a comedy and this it's got the four different covers on here. This this movie is just, I love this type of movie. I think that you can't get better than horror comedies when you, you get to these type of movies. Frank Henlin Hotter, actually I can't even remember that title. Uh, sorry, that, that uh, cover. I don't know that one. I think I've seen them all apart from this one. Well, I've seen it, but can't remember it. Now, these ones, when they came out at this point, they were quite flimsy, I'm going to say. I mean, they're still in good condition. You can still put them on the wall. Now, is it James Loritz? I think he's called uh, Loritz. I think he's fantastic. He hardly does anything. He's hardly done any movies. I think he's in Street Trash as well. And this, this girl here, she does do conventions now, I believe which is a great part in this, this movie. The short story is that this guy, he's an amateur scientist, as we all are, and what he decides to do is his girlfriend gets, this is not a spoiler because it happens right at the start of the movie, his girlfriend gets chopped up by a lawnmower, a renegade lawnmower that he's got, as he gives to her, as this is a lawnmower that you can operate by hand with a remote control, but of course it goes awry and it chops her up and she's all over the place. and he puts her back together again in Frankenstein mode, hence Frank and Hooker. But what he's got to do is he hasn't got much, many of the the parts that he needs, so he has to go to the red light district to get the parts to make up this, this person, his, his girlfriend, bring her back to life. But it's so funny. The receipt is £20. Yeah, £20. And that was on the 14th of the 1st, 2012. At two minutes past two, in Gateshead. I'm glad I got these. And these, would this be better in 4K? Yes. Is it a good print? Yes, it's quite a good print. Got a few scratches on it, but it's really um, a good a good film to watch and a good print on it. So that's Frank and Hooker. Next up is The Fun House. Now this has come out in the U US in 4K. It's meant to look sensational. My good friend Rock God 2004 linked down below to his channel. He did say that this one looks absolutely amazing on 4K. This one looks good. Don't get us wrong. Arrow have done a really good version of this. He gets the uh, alternative covers. I'm trying to think which cover it was that I saw. When I, was, I saw this at the cinema, the Whitney Bay Playhouse. It was, uh, it was brilliant. I loved it straight away. It's great going from the Whitley Bay Playhouse, which is right next door to the Spanish City indoor, like the, uh, the fun fair. And you're going to watch a movie about the fun affair. There's your two alternate covers. I think that might be on the US one, that one. Uh, 22, 90, 22 99 Wow, they weren't cheap. This is from the 27th of the 7th, 2011. So, yeah, at Silverlink. Ah, uh, Silverlink, which isn't there anymore. And you get this booklet, which is a little bit creased from being in the box, unfortunately. This film is a great film. It's it's a video nasty, but I think it was done by accident. I think there was another movie that uh, was a video nasty, and it had the other title of the Ma uh, the Fun House, and obviously they when they saw this as they thought it was that Fun House, I believe. A great great movie. I love movies that are in to do with fun fairs. Nice book that actually. A lot of text, a lot of alternative pictures in there. Good picture actually when you see it in the phone. Imagine putting that in the wall. Hi Deborah. You've been to the dentist recently. So that's the fun house. Next up is Mania Cop. Now I do own Mania Cop 2 and 3 on 4K from Blue Underground and they look absolutely sensational. Apparently they couldn't get the rights to get this one, unfortunately, because it would have been great to get those three from 
Blue Underground, but never say never. I would like to see them do it because, like I say, two and three, I, I do prefer one, but two and three are good movies, but the 4K on them is just unbelievable. It stars uh, Bruce Campbell as the alternative covers. From Silverlink again, which is no longer with us, it is was £17 on the 27th of July, 2012. You get a booklet with this. Now, if you're if you're getting these ones and you see them in CEX or whatever online, and you look at these videos and you say, right, this is the stuff I bought this on more or less day one. So you know that this stuff should be in there. So if you're getting something from a seller and you say, what have you got inside? And you need to get the poster and the booklet with this because you know that that is the correct thing in this set and they haven't got it. You might want to go with the task of all thing if that's if that's what you want to do. You know, get everything single thing to do with, with this uh, release. Bill Lustig, good director. Doesn't do much now, if anything. Every time I look at these things, I will get a poster holder and I will start putting these things on the wall. Sometime. I always say it, I never do it, but I'm sure I will do it one of these days. Why not? So that's Mania Cop. So next up is Obsession. Now this is this is a meaty set here. I remember when I, I saw this one, actually, see if I've got the receipt for this, because I'll tell you about how I thought, no, oh, I've got the receipt. Let's see how much I paid for this. Because one, once upon a time when this come out, you, you couldn't get it. And then it was big bucks and then it went down and it was selling off really uh, cheaply in HMV for a long time. This special edition with a booklet in which you hardly ever got actually in these white box ones. It's kind of, of a, one of a kind. And in here, I paid £11 for it. Paid £11 for that. I was in Gateshead. I remember actually picking it up in Gateshead and it was... Um, I remember walking around the medical centre with it from the 1st of the 2nd, 2013. Quite good. I remember, I think that's it. That comes across like a, one I remember. Don't remember that one at all. Don't remember those two. This is a movie that, it's a funny movie because it looks, it's got that, and Brian De Palma does this, it's got that look of it, but it's very... It's kind of very soft, the picture. It looks like it's been filmed in mist and fog. And it's done that way on a purpose, but it looks really... I don't imagine I could ever get a good 4K off this. That's what I'm trying to say. And have I watched it since I got it on this version? No, I haven't. And that's over 10 years ago. And the reason why I've done that is because it's not a movie that kind of really jumps out at us. But when I saw it for £11 on there on this, this special edition on the white box ones, I thought, I've got to get that one because I didn't want to leave it on the shelf in case I come back to it. I do think I will come back to it. It's just a question of when. Yeah, it's more like the script, actually. And uh, you do get a bit of stuff in the background, in the back, shall I say. This is a thriller. It's a noir thriller, as far as I can remember. It's funny because it, it looks like it's, uh, you can, because I was thinking which is the right way around for this, but you have got, it looks like upside down and stuff like that. But anyway, it's also got an early Brian De Palma short films, Wharton's Wake and Responsive Eye, 1962 and 1966, respectively. Yeah, but these are all packed with extras, you know, as you know, this is the first like UK special edition that you thought I have got to get these. So that's Obsession. So next up is Vamp. This is a film that I got out at the video shop all the time. It was one of the, the ones that I just, when I saw it, it had a great cover. If the cover's here, might be. And oh, it's a nice cover. And that one. It's great getting these out because you just think, I can't even remember seeing this when I got it. When you saw that, you thought, right, I got demons, the feel for demons when I saw this cover, but it was nothing like that. Brilliant. And this this movie, it's, I tell you what, the colours on here, it's got like that Suspiria palette of this neonness. I think this would look sensational in 4K. In fact, I think I might watch this again because I haven't watched this for a long time. Although I used to watch this on a loop 
on VHS. You also get this booklet. Grace Do Jones is uh, such a fascinating person, I find. I remember me and Debra watching her. She was live on the TV and she was doing a uh, slave to the rhythm and she had a hula hoop and she was hula hooping the whole thing when she was singing for the whole time. That must take some doing. I can't even do it one once around. That's a poster there. And I, I'm glad, actually, not that I would put this up, but when I'm looking at it, I do think that this artwork is absolutely brilliant. It looks like a brand new art, but it's not the featured art of it, which is a bit strange. You'd think that would have been the cover. And it deserves to get a good 4K because the colours in it, like I say, are unbelievable. And you do get, you get, you know, I'll put them up there if you can see it. You do get that, all that extras as well. And you do, it is region free, it says on here. So that's Vamp. So on my shelves, after the white box editions, I have got Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Now this has got a kind of slip box. There's not a lot of these ones out either. And this one was highly collectible on back in the day. I don't know how much it costs now on eBay. I did buy this on release. I think I paid around about £17 for it. But it does have on here, as well as this movie, this movie is absolutely amazing. It's so out there. And it, you know, every bit of language in it is just pure 60s. It's all Hepcat, hey, what's happening, you know, all that type of stuff. It's so fun to watch. Quite brutal as well, actually. So this movie came out in 1970. It's a Russ Meyer film. And Arrow used to release a lot of the Russ Meyer stuff on DVD. And now re recently I thought to myself, yeah, I think I'll go and see if they've got that stuff, like the box set they put out. I'll see if I can get it for a reasonable price. And after about £150 worth, I thought, no chance, I'm not doing that. So this set has a second movie on it. The movie is called, this is limited to 3,000 copies. And the second movie on here is called, if I can find it, The Seven Minutes, 1971. Now, funny enough, I haven't watched that at all when I look back on it. And I must have bought this when it came out. So actually, it's on a second disc, which is even better. This is a great movie. One of his best, one of his more normal movies, if, if there can be such a thing as a normal movie by him. This tells a story of this band. I think they're called the Vixens. The, oh, the Curry Nations. Or Curry Nation Street. Got a great cast. Dolly Reed as Kelly McNamara. It's just a crazy story about this band, but there's a lot more to it than that. And that, that fella in there, he's a kind of bit of a Charles Manson type character. A lot of text in here. You get stuff about the, the seven minutes. I haven't got any idea what that is like at all. An explosive film about a band book and a trial that tore a town apart. Mm. Odd. But I think that this, this film is such a good, it's like a musical in a fashion, but it's it's got some dark themes in here. It really has. Like I say, it's just like a, a sort of Josie and the Pussycats meets Charles Manson. Very 60s. Well, it's a 1970 movie, isn't it? It's just got that vibe. So that's Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Next up is the only Arrow Steelbook I own. It is Foxy Brown. This is a brilliant steelbook. Absolutely amazing. My good friend Dave Ramson to thank for these steelbook um, protectors. They're brilliant. They really are. I do urge anybody who's got steelbooks or anything you want to keep in the, the best way, do get these. They're brilliant. And they keep these in fair condition. I do have the the J card for this, but I keep the J card in a separate place. Probably um, touch that as well. This is it. This is absolutely a great film. Well, it stars Pam Greer, so it's got to be great. Got a card for that. Actually, I've got two cards in there. Strange. And you get your booklet, lovely booklet there. 
although I prefer coffee than movie coffee. I don't think that was ever out in the steel book. This is the black exploitation film. It's great. Absolutely brilliant. Such an iconic character, actress in these movies. When you get a, a black exploitation movie with Palm Green in it, you know you're in for a treat. Yeah, but loads and loads of pictures in there. Brilliant. I think she's a special agent. So that's Foxy Brown. Next up is Don't Go in the House. This is the Arrow Store exclusive. I don't know how much I paid, but it's not that much. Although it started going for crazy money online. Now, the best thing about this is, and I thought Arrow were going to do a lot more of this. And to be honest, this is the only one they've done so far. They have taken, they have put Arrow on there, but they've kind of taken off the video space. You know, the VHS box. This is like the VHS cover. Band video nasty as well. And they've recreated it on here as if you had the band video nasty. It's great. And I think that I was love I would love to start doing some more stuff like this because this is one of the best releases they've ever done. Obviously I've kept it in a protective case because it's so collectible, this one. I want to have it I want to keep it in the most spectacular fashion I can. So it's nice when you when you do take these out of the the, the sort of um cases. And you just have a run through them again. But you you know that they're in exactly the same condition they were as they before they went in. This is a reversible art. Obviously, you swap them around, so you've got the best of both worlds. This is such a great movie. It's quite brutal as well. The the scene where this this person is supposed to have, you know, a, a flamethrower on somebody, it looks a hundred percent real, but it's done with mirrors. But you would never know when you watch it the first time, you think, My God, it's actually happening. So this is a three disc set. Now, if I can remember that this three disc set, you get the theatrical cut there on Blu-ray. You do get the extended cut on Blu-ray and you get the nasty bonus disc, which is the only available on this one here. Now, actually this has got a, a different artwork on here. It's okay, but I do, I do prefer this one because this is probably more like the VHS, a, a different VHS cover, or maybe the American um, Blu-ray. So on here you do get, you get a brand new two K restoration from the theatrical cut, eighty three minutes, and the eighty nine minute television cut with additional scenes and alternative footage. Now the quality on here looks absolutely amazing, but on disc two you get limited edition exclusive. You get the Blu-ray presentation of the extended 92 minutes cut of the movie. So that's an extra little bit longer. And you get all the extras on here. And also on disc three, you get the limited nasty edition exclusive. You get a brand new, you get a presentation of the theatrical version from a 2K scan of an uncut British internegative in a widescreen and exposed open mat presentations with lossless mono audio. And you get cinema mode. Watch the film with a recreation of an opening cinema program from the early 1980s. Textless title sequence, VHS mode. Watch the film with a, trans in a transfer of the original video nasty VHS release with uncut and censored options. So this has got any amount of versions of this movie. It, it satisfy anyone. If you want to watch one as if you were putting the VHS one, you know, if you just wanted to just go back in time to the VHS stores and just say, right, I'm going to watch this as if I just got out of the video library. You can, you can have that cover there to look at while you put this one in and you watch it. It's great on that extras disc. I have watched a bit of it where you do have this thing where you walk into the cinema and it takes you on the cinema with all the things you can have. It takes you all the posters that would have been up at the time. It's a fascinating thing and I just wish they would do more like this because there's plenty more out there you could do this with. I don't know why they haven't actually done this again. It's a bit strange, but it's a, it's really... And um, it's it's an if you can get I don't know how much this goes for at the minute. If you can get it, this is this is like the ultimate video nasty presentation in a fashion from a uh, from Arrow. Just such a shame that they kind of just stopped at this one. But a great um 
the booklets here, it's got a lot of stuff in it. We do get well, a smaller uh, poster, obviously, but this is just, I mean, come on. Imagine having that in the wall. That's brilliant. That's the one you would have, and people would be like stunned that you've got it. Available from all good rental stores or direct from video space. Yeah, for a large, probably 30 quid plus. You would pay for a, one of these original VHSs when they came out. So I can't, this is one of the best ones I've got on these shelves. And it's uh, such a really good collectible one. And it's literally got everything you could ever want to, to know about this movie. And amazing, it's got all them different cuts. So that's Don't Go In The House. So after those ones on the shelf, or the next ones are all the slip covered ones. They'll go through every slip cover I've got after this one until I get the ones that are just regular Amory cases. So they'll be coming up in the next couple of episodes, the slip covers. So the first one up here is American Horror Project. This was just gifted to me by my good friend Tris, aka Bead Movie Maniac. And I can't thank Tris enough. This has got three movies on it, and one of them is a band video nasty, which is the witch who came from the sea. This is such a, a great it's it's like a smaller version of a big box set and i let the big box set go to cut in fact it just went out of print i never got around with it but i did buy this one separately because um i wanted to have the video nasty and i'm glad i'm really glad to get the whole of the three because i haven't got this one i haven't seen this one i have seen this one this is this is crazy this film it's in a carnival So three movies on separate discs. It's got a ton of extras on here. Well worth owning. I will get American Hot Horror Project 3. Sorry, 2. But I haven't got that one yet. Great. I do keep the shrink wrap on. When I first got these ones, I didn't keep the shrink wrap on that much. So most of them haven't got shrink wrap on. But some of them have. It just depends. Because a lot of these I got when they first came out. With the slip covers on. Because some of the arrows didn't have slip covers on. But all the ones you see there... Well, if you get them in the future, when they're when they're coming up, try and get the slipcover if you can. Yeah, I'm a big fan of slipcovers, of course. So yeah, these are three strange movies that I think they all, you know, take place roughly near a fairground or in a fairground. I think they've got aspects of that. I don't know why they put them together actually, but they did. These are quite low budget, especially Malatesta's Carnival of Blood it must have been filmed on a two pound budget. But these are these are great. I do think that which from who came from the sea is one of the best video nasties that's never talked about. But I've got a lot of time for it. So that's the volume one of American Horror Project. So last up in this part is Basket Case. This is the US release. Got a lovely bit of spot gloss on there if I can sort of catch the light, but not too much light. It's brilliant. Just there. It doesn't really show it off, unfortunately. And you do get it on the spine as well. Yep. Yeah. But this is a great cover this this is the region one like i say but though it does say you know region free there but i don't think it's a region free it's definitely the us one anyways and that's your turn of art the more like the original art there now though this is out in 4k will i get on 4k because to be honest this is a 16 millimeter movie there's some uh spot gloss in the back there so will I get this on 4K? I'm not too sure. I've got them all on Blu-ray. I've got the other two. But I've got the other one that has the three of them on a set as well from Second Sight, I believe. But this one's, it's a great set. So I'm kind of thinking that, I don't know. That's a nice bit of artwork there. I think I'll just stick with this one. I'm more than happy with this one. It looks great. Lovely booklet here. I don't know if this is the same booklet you would get in the 4K. Possibly is, because I will kind of do that. This is a great movie. What's, uh, I like them all actually, all the three of them. I think this is my favourite one. And it was this ever a band video last year? I don't think it was. But the, the short story of this one is, if everybody probably knows this one, the fact is that this this uh, fella has a twin brother and I think they're separated at birth and Belial, I think he's called, he lives, carries him around in a box uh, or a basket, should I say. And he keeps jumping out the basket. I mean, some of the effects are quite laughable. But it's a great story, quite unique as well. Now, is this from, and I'm going to say, is it Frank Henlin Hotler as well? Because he's renowned for this type of thing. Yes, it is him, yeah. I should have known. 
He's got his mark all over the place. He just loves this type of stuff. Yeah, quite unique character to say at least. Like a really low budget horror movie, exploitation horror movie. But to be honest, this the print on here looks absolutely spectacular. So I would imagine the 4K will look better, but how much better? And I think I'm more or less happy with this like, this amazing addition that I got of my good friend John Hall. So anyway, that's it for part two. Stick around. Pretty soon I'll be making part three. So thanks for watching. You take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.